I want to welcome you to Living Life. Today we're continuing in our study of the Gospel according to Matthew, and we're in chapter 1, so that means we're looking at the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, we are told very clearly that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. And what a wonderful thing to think about during Christmas time, but it's not just for that time, it's for us now as we're looking at the Word of God to realize that this is the truth. When I was much younger and at a church, there was an interview of a pastor and one member asked the question, do you believe in the virgin birth? And I thought that was rather an interesting question to ask out of all the things that he could have asked. But you know, as I've grown up now in the church and seen some of the theology that people have, I think that's not a bad question to ask because really what they're wanting to know is, do you believe in what the Bible says? Well, he did say he believed in the virgin birth. But if he had said, no, it's just kind of a fable in a way to show us that Jesus is a, a good person or something like that, you know what that would have been called? Heresy. But he believed in the virgin birth, and that leads to some good theology. Well, today, as we open up God's Word, we're going to hear this great story about the birth of our Savior, Jesus. So let's have now ears to hear as the Scripture is read for us. Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. So right away here in the story about the birth of Jesus Christ, we're told that she becomes pregnant, Mary becomes pregnant by the Holy Spirit, and that what is inside her has been conceived by the Holy Spirit. And we hear about the Holy Spirit. But I have to let you know that when I was growing up, I didn't hear a whole lot about the Holy Spirit. In fact, he was kind of ignored, or I just didn't hear much about the third member of the Trinity. I mean, did I hear about God the Father? Of course. Did I hear about God the Son, Jesus? Absolutely. But the Holy Spirit, I didn't really hear much about him. And I wonder if that's true for you. But you know, the Holy Spirit is throughout Scripture, we see Him. In fact, in the Old Testament, starting at the very beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, we're told about the Spirit of the Lord there. And then we see that like the David, who wrote a lot of the Psalms, there's a point when he confesses and says in Psalm 51, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. He wanted that guidance and the leadership that the Holy Spirit provided for him. And then we turn the page from the Old Testament to the New Testament, 
And we have here the Holy Spirit very much a part of the birth of our Savior. And then throughout Jesus' life, we see that the Holy Spirit was leading and guiding him. And even he was there at the baptism of Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit plays a very important role here also in the New Testament. I mean, we throughout all of Scripture, in fact, Scripture itself was written by people who were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And then as we read the Bible, we need him to illuminate our understanding of what the Word of God says. And so the Holy Spirit is very active in our lives and very active in the church because we're told that there are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And so these gifts are there for the building up of the body of Christ. And then we have the fruit of the Spirit and the Spirit at work in our lives, producing the fruit of love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And so when we see things like that in ourselves or in those around us, we know that the Holy Spirit is at work. And the Holy Spirit now has the ministry of convicting us of our sin, and he also reassures us of God's love for us. We know that, that he is there to lead us and guide us. And the Holy Spirit has many services that he does on behalf of God's people. But one of the things that I'm very thankful for is that he is our helper and he is our comforter. And so it's important for us to remember the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives and as we see him active here in the birth of our Lord. And in our text, we also are told that there was going to be the name given to this child that is being born to Mary and Joseph, and that he would be given the name Jesus. And I just love that that name means God saves. It tells us who he is, that he is God in the flesh. And also it tells us what he does. He saves. Now, of course, he's not, he didn't come to save God's people from Rome, or he didn't come to save God's people from trials or suffering. He came to save God's people from their sins. You see, he is our savior. He's the one who delivers us. We are redeemed and we're reconciled to God the Father through Jesus Christ. And so here we celebrate his birth. And then there's another name that we're told that he is given. And in our text, speaking through the words of Isaiah the prophet, that he will be called Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. And isn't it just wonderful to know that we have a with us God and he came in the flesh and dwelt among us and we got to behold his glory. And so that's very comforting. Like I like in the Old Testament in Joshua 1, 9, we're told to be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so, yes, our Lord is with us. And when Jesus, after being raised from the dead and then was going to ascend into heaven, he said that he would be with us even to the end of the age. And so he is a with us God. And we can take great delight in that as we study this great gospel according to Matthew. And as we begin now with the birth story of Jesus Christ. We can be very thankful to God's glory and our joy. So as we close our Living Life devotion today, we've been looking at the story of Jesus' birth. You know, when Joseph 
awoke from his dream, he had a major decision to make. I mean, was he going to obey the Lord and continue with this engagement and be married to Mary? Or was he going to divorce her? Well, he chose wisely and he obeyed the Lord. And that makes sense because their intentions all the time were to have a marriage, a real marriage. They were going to have intimacy and they were going to plan to have children. But of course, their first child, their firstborn, wow, that wasn't planned, was it? But nevertheless, they were parents to Jesus. I mean, they helped him to grow and develop as a young man. And of course, Jesus was very unique because he's God in the flesh. We're so thankful for Mary and Joseph, but we focus our attention on Jesus. Let's pray. Well, Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that the New Testament is filled with the gospel of Jesus Christ, that indeed this one who was born in a little town of Bethlehem was indeed our Savior, our Lord, and that, Father, the gospel is that we can trust him. And so, Lord, I ask that you would help us to have eyes to see how we can move forward in our faith. For, Father, we want nothing more than to draw close to our Lord and each step that we take on our spiritual journey, that we would do so with a faith, a hope, a trust, and a confidence in Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we do pray. Amen.